Have you ever had a crush on someone and wondered, why them? Why not the person sitting next to them, or the dozens of other people you see every day? Maybe it's a classmate, a co-worker, or a random person you bumped into at a coffee shop, and suddenly, they're stuck in your head. It feels like magic, doesn't it? Like your heart just decides without asking your permission. But in reality, your brain is doing all the work behind the scenes. Every glance, every interaction, and even your past experiences are shaping the way you feel about someone. It's not random, it's actually a mix of biology, psychology, and a little bit of trickery from your subconscious mind. But here's the weird part. Sometimes, you don't even realize when it's happening. One day, someone is just a normal person, and the next, you feel nervous when they text you back. What's going on inside your head that makes your heart race for this specific person? Let's say you develop a crush on someone unexpectedly. Maybe they laughed at your joke in a way that made you feel special. Maybe they made eye contact with you just a second longer than usual. Or maybe, out of nowhere, they just start looking more attractive to you. That's the mystery, right? What exactly is your brain doing in these moments? Is it their looks? Their voice? Their personality? Or is there something much deeper happening? Well, turns out your brain is making decisions way before you even realize it. And sometimes, it tricks you into thinking you made the choice when, in reality, your subconscious already set everything in motion. To understand how this works, let's step inside your brain. Imagine it as a control room, filled with buttons, switches, and little scientists running around, analyzing every interaction you have. When you meet someone, your brain is constantly processing information about them, how they talk, how they smell, how they make you feel. Then comes the real game changer, chemicals. Your brain is basically a chemistry lab, and when you develop a crush, it releases a cocktail of powerful chemicals that mess with your emotions. Dopamine, this is the feel-good chemical. When you see your crush, your brain rewards you with a dopamine boost, making you feel happy and excited. Oxytocin, known as the bonding hormone. Oxytocin makes you feel connected and attached to someone. Adrenaline, ever felt your heart race when you talk to your crush? That's adrenaline kicking in, making everything feel intense. Serotonin, this one's sneaky, it actually drops when you have a crush, which is why people with crushes often become obsessed, thinking about that person nonstop. Basically, your brain is turning into a love-struck DJ, playing a playlist of emotions that make you want to be around this person more and more. But that's just the beginning. Crushes aren't just about brain chemicals. They're also shaped by your past experiences. Ever noticed that you tend to like a certain type of person? That's because your subconscious mind has been keeping track of the people you felt comfortable around in the past. Maybe your crush reminds you of a childhood friend or someone who once made you feel safe. Maybe they have traits similar to a family member you admire. Your brain loves patterns, and when it recognizes something familiar, it nudges you toward that person. And then there's something called the mere exposure effect. This means the more you see someone, the more attractive they start to seem. That's why people often develop crushes on coworkers, classmates, or gym buddies. Your brain is associating their presence with comfort and familiarity. It's basically saying, hey, you've seen this person a lot. They must be important. But here's where things get tricky. Sometimes, your brain messes up. Your brain is great at making connections, but sometimes it makes the wrong ones. Have you ever liked someone more after they ignored you? Or felt attracted to someone just because they played hard to get? That's because your brain misinterprets rejection as a challenge. When someone doesn't show interest in you, your brain releases dopamine and adrenaline, the same chemicals responsible for excitement and anticipation. It's like your brain turns it into a game, making you want their attention even more. This is why some people get stuck chasing someone who doesn't really care about them. On the flip side, your brain can also make you lose interest in someone too quickly. If your brain no longer sees them as exciting or unpredictable, the dopamine rush fades, and suddenly, they don't seem as special anymore. So, what does this all mean? Well, knowing how your brain works can actually help you control your crushes instead of letting them control you. If you're aware that familiarity makes people more attractive, you can ask yourself, do I actually like this person, or do I just see them all the time? And if someone is playing hard to get, you can recognize that your brain is just craving the dopamine rush, not necessarily the person themselves. That way, you don't waste time chasing someone who isn't right for you. 
On top of that, understanding your brain's patterns can help you break unhealthy cycles. If you always fall for a certain type, and it never works out, maybe it's time to rethink what your brain is doing. Are you being drawn to them because they're actually good for you, or just because they remind you of something familiar from your past? Now that you know the science behind crushes, you can start making better choices in your love life. Crushes aren't just random emotions, they're carefully crafted experiences, shaped by your brain's chemistry, past experiences, and even how often you see someone. Instead of feeling powerless when you develop feelings for someone, you can step back and analyze it. Is this real attraction, or is my brain just doing what it always does? And speaking of the way your brain reacts to people, have you ever wondered what it means when someone looks at you without smiling? It might be sending a message you don't even realize. Click here to find out.